Hey there, creative friends. I'm Christy from Confessions of a Serial DIYer.com. Today I'm back sharing how I whitewash furniture. Um, I do, so I've done several pieces of whitewashing and I like to whitewash the top and paint the bottom. Actually, you can see in the background, my sofa table is whitewashed on top with a white bottom and also you can see a peak of my kitchen table too. So um, I have used several products in the past to do this and most recently I used um, Up in Smoke by Dixie Bell gel stain and I really like the way it worked. So I'm going to show you real quickly on this small stool that I've got how I did it. So I get everything together and then I'll show you how it's done. All right, I've gathered my supplies for this project. The first thing you're going to need is Dixie Bell's Voodoo Gel Stain in Up in Smoke. It's a nice gray stain, so it's going to create a great base for our whitewash finish. Um, white paint. This is Dixie Bell's Cotton, which is a bright white. I've also used Fluff, which is a little bit less of a more, it's more of a vintage white. Um, I'm going to use this one today though, and we're going to mix this with a little bit of water. So this is just plain old water. It's just tap water in here. I just keep this in my workshop like this. A cup to mix up our paint, um, a paint stirrer, gloves because it's going to get messy, a couple clean cloths, and a paintbrush. And that's all you need. Okay, this is our project piece that we're going to start with. I've already sanded it. I sanded it first with um, 100 grit sandpaper and then I followed it up with 220 grit sandpaper. I used my uh, rotary sander. I must have got a little bit of dust on there. So it's ready to go to uh, accept the stain. So I'm not going to use um, any kind of conditioner because you're not really going to see a whole lot of the wood grain. I would use a conditioner prior to stain if I really wanted the stain to soak in evenly and be, you know, have a beautiful finish, but this is going to have a, you know, a whitewashed look. It's not, you're not going to see just a stained finish. So first thing you want to do is put your gloves on and then shake up your stain really good. Okay. If you don't shake it up really well, it's going to just come out clear. All right. And then we're just going to squirt it on. I love that it comes in these squirt bottles because that makes it really easy. And we're just going to put it in. So I might leave this a little bit thicker than I would um, if I were just staining it gray because I want a nice gray base. So I've used a weathered, a weathered wood finish to do this before. And I've never got as nice of a gray result as I got with this when I used it last. Um, it would, my finish would be splotchy. It wouldn't be weather. It wouldn't always be a nice gray. It might've been brown in some places, but I found that this did a really good job of giving me a nice gray, even finish. So we're gonna let that dry and I may may give it one more coat. So we'll see what it looks like when it's dry. All right, let's give it one more coat. This is pretty dry. It dries really quickly, so. If I were doing a larger surface, I would just work in sections, but because this is just small, I could kind of do the whole thing at once. <laughs> Oh yeah, this is gonna be a perfect base. This is exactly the color that I want it to be. Actually, it's kind of cool as is, to be honest. Isn't that cool? I mean, I really kind of like it as it is. All right, so when this dries, we'll go ahead and get to our whitewashing. That is so easy, right? I always say that, don't I? All right, we'll let that dry and we'll come back in a few and start our whitewashing process. All righty, our stool is dry. It didn't take long at all. Maybe, I mean, really like 15 minutes. It's 
dry, dry enough to the touch. So I'm gonna mix up my paint. I usually use about one third water to two thirds paint. So one part water, two parts paint. I already gave this a good shake. I don't really need very much. I should have protected my surface here, but eh. oh well. Okay, so I got my brush, my paint, my dry surface. Let's do that. All right, and we're just gonna brush it on. Just like this. So it's easier on this small piece, but on a larger piece, I probably would just work in sections. You don't want to put this on all the way on the whole piece, just work in small sections. So. All right. Get our rag, just wipe it off. Ooh. Ah. Isn't that cool? Love it. So when you write, wipe with your rag, you're going to see what, what your, uh, this is going to create your grain. So you want this to be as straight as possible. All right. Isn't that pretty? I told you it was easy. You might see where that line overlaps. I probably could have just done this whole thing, honestly, because it's a small piece, but it's okay. The more you wipe, the more you're going to take off. So, but if you get like a funky marking in there that you don't like, or you know, a weird area, just come back over it. Add a little bit more paint. Wipe it off. In fact, I like mine a little bit whiter than it is, so I probably will add a little bit more paint and do it again. And then you can even go back when you're done with like a super dry brush and add more white paint. Just do another little all over. So I like mine a little bit whiter. That's really all there is to it.